Hello, and welcome. I am Zinder, aka Lazy Neko. And I'm Greg. And, uh, we're going to be prevent preventing? Presenting you with a completely unprofessional uh, advanced tutorial video on APB for uh, new players. Because, well, I'm going to be frank, I'm sick of people being bad. So, first things first. One thing that has always been a big pet peeve of mine since joining the game is people that go through the, the uh, game's tutorial without paying attention to readying up. The, now, the default keybind for this is the letter K on your keyboard, and that was left mouse that I clicked by accident. As you can see, it makes you go green and put a check mark next to you. That'll set you as ready to jo join up for a mission. Now, your entire group has to be like that for it to happen, unless somebody goes AFK in your group. Or is in another district, like, uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but Joe is for us. We're in a really empty district right now, just to uh, do this. Now, there's another thing that's defaulted on, called auto-ready, which is quite possibly the dumbest feature ever added to this game, but we're not going to get into that. And I'm going to show you how to disable that. So you'll go into your options, and it's under game settings. And down here on the very bottom, it says use auto-ready system. You want to uncheck that because it will end up readying you up if you don't want to ready because uh, 30 seconds, I believe it's 30 seconds after exiting a mission or joining a district and spawning or whatever it will automatically ready you up regardless of whether or not you want it to be and the only way to stop it is you have to manually unready after it auto readies you so sound like you were going to say something no, I was just yeah. going to say, it, um, it kind of does kind of screw you over, because a lot of the time, 30 seconds isn't even long enough to spawn your car after a mission if it gets destroyed or something. True. But, uh, anyhow, on to another important aspect about APB that people don't realize. It's not in, uh, not, in, not, not in too many games, and that is the view swap. It changes the handedness of your gun, which also gives you better viewpoints around corners because you don't have to expose quite as much of your body. Now, this is defaulted to V. Other ways it can happen is if you're aiming in marksmanship mode and you try and do a tilt, it will swap the handedness to the direction of the tilt you're trying to perform. Now, however, to my knowledge, uh, I guess we could prove this right here, if you tilt, it, in fact, does not really affect your hitbox. Like, it's, I believe it slides your hitbox over. Yeah, if you see... Uh, that's another thing I should mention. Hitboxes, it's essentially one solid block. I can, you can't shoot between people's legs. Uh, if they're not max height, you can't shoot over their head very well. Because if you look right there, I'm aiming over his head and I'm still hitting him. But the game, the way it works, is defaulting the shot hit to his mouth to make it still look like it hit his body. It's the same with the same side. It's because... The hitbox of characters is at pretty much the maximum height and width you can achieve, and regardless of what you do to your character, your hitbox will remain the same. Now, another thing I want to talk about, since we've covered leaning and how it's it expands your hitbox to the side, it doesn't, you know, make your hitbox give you less spot to be hit by. You can still be hit by the same amount, and in fact it has this really annoying tilt to it. There's another thing. Uh, I marked down car spawns. Well, I'm not, not entirely sure why I marked that down, but anywhere you see the little car thingies, uh, red means only crims can use it, blue only enforcers can use it, and the gray ones are neutral. Uh, there is a bugged car spawner, I think it's in Waterfront, where it shows that a criminal it's criminal only, but both factions can use it. I don't know whether it's supposed to be gray, or if it's bugged, or what, but... An important thing here, some of the people, especially higher level players, they'll have cars that have mobile supplies in the back. Now, some people mark them with their with the mobile supply logo, the ammo logo, and you can resupply from that. So if you notice, I use my ammo, and I no longer have full ammo. If you use T, now this is the same thing used to refill from a joker box, it will start filling up your ammo. Now, you can do that from any person that is in your mission, or in your group, like in this case, Greg also has one, he just has the words ammo on the back. If I use some bullets, and I walk up to the back of his car, because I'm grouped with him, I can press T, 
and I could fill up. Now, that is only for people that have the mobile supply mod in their car. As you can see, I have here, mobile supply unit. Now, another important thing to note about this, and you can do it from your field supply kit, which is activated using the 5 key by default. You see these little ammo icons here? You can click on those to purchase ammo. Uh, let's see if I can't use enough ammo to be able to do that. You can do it from the field supply box. However, it has a cooldown on it. I would also like to add that um, if you are resupplying from a car, the car must be stationary and not moving at the time. Yeah, that is a very important thing to mention. Now, you see how the triple bullet button thingy down next to my ammo count is lit up. That ammo count is storage ammo, the amount you have in your storage. Now, if you click on that, you get this little thing where you can drag it. Doesn't hurt if you drag it the whole way to the end, it'll only charge you for as much as you need. So it says you don't have enough storage space to store 50 boxes of ammo. Do you want to purchase one box instead? Okay. And it charges you for one box of ammo and puts it into your storage. So that's how you fill up your ammo from, you can even do it from your field supply kit, like I mentioned. Now, another thing to mention, and this is another real big issue that I have with new players, they automatically think that this gun the default, the stock star, the starter weapon, is complete shit. It is not. In fact, it is, in my opinion, one of the best guns in the game. Because it's really good while on the move still. Uh, not in a distance so much, but it kind of is. It's got very low recoil, especially if you're crouched. Keep in mind that if you are crouched, like in many shooters, it increases your aim. It makes your accuracy better. So, the star has very little recoil, especially if fired in moderate sized bursts. Now there is no lo there is no locational damage in the game, all guns take a consistent number of bullets to kill. The star, at uh, short to medium ranges, I believe its damage caps like starts dropping off at like 40 to 50 meters. It'll take 6 shots to kill uh, within a reasonable time frame, like if you're shooting in rapid succession. Because if they get time to go away and heal, it, well, they can heal. Straight up, basically. They heal. It takes more bullets. Yeah, for some reason this gun gets a lot of bad press just because it's the starting gun. Um, it's not exactly like the starting pistol, which unfortunately is complete and utter. Yeah. <laughs> you still have yours, right? Well, your Valentine's uh, one at least? Yes, I do. Now, this also, while talking about weapons, and while he's switching that, I want to mention something. Something that people don't think about. When it comes to semi-automatic weapons, people always talk about macros to make your gun, you know, completely fast firing and whatnot. Now the thing is, is macros don't really work due to ping and the way the game mechanics work. Now if I spam the fire button really fast, you know, you'd think it would fire at its maximum fire rate, right? However, if you watch, if I click carefully, but still quickly, it'll, it'll fire faster because it only registers the next click after it comes off of the uh, the refire. So you'll notice that appeared much faster, and that was with more consistent clicking. It all depends on how fast you click. If you you can click too fast to fire your weapon, which is part of another reason why macros are worthless. And also, the macros are sketchy. It's, there's a big debate on whether they're legitimate or not. So my recommendation, don't use them, just don't panic. Just don't panic. Now, another major, well, first of all, we'll let him show off his snub nose. As you can see, this gun has very little spread, but if he uses his snub nose, it's got this quite a bit of spread. Fire of it, by the way. Yeah, that is the maximum fire rate. And I'm not sure how the recoil compares, but I'm pretty sure it's nowhere near as bad as the RSA, the the long-barreled version of that gun. I actually have one of those, I think. Well, d when you fire it, does it kick your aim up to, like, the next level of the parking garage? Yes. <laughs> the snub nose does that even? Uh, the snub nose pretty much does that near enough, yeah. This, if you look, I can land nearly every single shot in the same hole I did before. That gun is very, very accurate and very strong, however, it's very bad for close range combat. And it's also very slow firing, as you can see. This gun... This gun is, uh, 
it's the uh, Obeya FBW. It's unlocked. I believe they made it so it's unlocked from one of the first contacts. Yes, it is unlocked by. I can't remember the name of the guy, but it's level five at Waterfront. And it only takes like five missions to unlock. I thought. I don't know. We're not going to get into that. This isn't a who unlocks what video. This is talking about the guns. Now, another thing that I've noticed that a lot of people don't understand is what flanking is. Now, there in pretty much like 99% of places, there is more than one way to enter a place. So, we'll say, because it does happen, we'll say you have a drop-off point, and it's right here. Right in this room, right in this spot, because I believe this is the exact location of a drop-off point that can happen. Also, the fences that don't have the do not enter signs on them that look like this, the big double ones, are destructible. Both by bullets and by running through with a car. But say your objective is there, and say, drags my opponent, say he's sitting here, behind this wall, and he's watching out this doorway or watching down another hallway or something. And say you're coming in that hallway there, where your team is, keeping them busy, right? You can come in one of the alternate ways, such as here, or you can go around to the hallway that we ran in through, which, if he's in the position he's in now, is actually a really good place, because then you can come up directly behind him and have a pretty good distance view. And it keeps you safe from the other areas of the place, however it is a bit of a shooting gallery. There's another hallway there that leads back around and gets you to back over there. I'll show you here. And you can also come through the building. Now, the whole point of flanking is you come up behind the enemy and basically whenever your team is distracting them or say you keep running in the same way or your team does or something, which is why I'm trying to get into flanking because I want people to stop, as I call them, lemmings. They're lemoning, lemoning towards the objective from the same way every time. If one way doesn't work, try a different direction. If it doesn't work once, there's a good chance that it's not going to work again. I mean, it does happen, but... Also, for attacking, another thing that people don't think of is... Say you know somebody's at that corner, or say you've injured them pretty bad, but they're hiding behind the corner and you can't afford to charge. You can prep a grenade, and by holding the key, you can do what's called cooking it, so it explodes sooner. Well, not sooner, it explodes in the same amount of time, however, they have less time to react. Because you can throw a nade to the ground like that, and it'll sit on the ground and be an explode. Or you can prep it in your hand and throw it, and with timed, when you get good at timing it, it will actually explode in their face if you threw it right. My now, favorite way for that is to actually um, partially cook it, so when it when I throw it, I can follow it and then follow up and blast them in the face. But make sure you don't stand on your grenade when you do that. Yes, don't don't do that. I'm sure you've done that a few times. A lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> now, another thing to mention, because it's another one of my biggest issues with new players, don't try to shoot through your teammates. Friendly fire is on in this game, and you will end up killing your teammate or causing them to die due to taking additional damage from you while being shot at by an enemy. Make sure that your crosshair is not green. Something I'd like to note on that as well is that if you do kill a friendly, you will get a friendly fire demerit, and I believe that it takes away 25% of your mission rewards per one, I with an was, additional 10% at the end. I thought it was 10% per, each per next one. I thought it was 10% per demerit. But anyhow, one quick thing is I'm sure you noticed, I'm still hitting him despite my crosshair being grey. That is because as I'll use this wall to show. So you see how I'm aimed completely around the corner? My crosshair is around the corner, but my gun is in the wall. Well, apparently it didn't work in that case. But when you fire, a lot of the times, your bullet's going to hit the wall. You see? The reason for that is, the bullets come from just outside the end of your barrel. So, like, in this case, it did shoot through because my barrel because, is actually yeah. outside the wall. But in this case, you know, my gun is like three quarters of the way in here. When I fire, they're all going to hit the wall. So, a lot of the time... Oh, God. I was going to say, so to make sure that your barrel is outside the wall before you start firing. 
A lot of the times when that actually happens and you've got your crossover over your enemy, I can't actually show it, obviously, because I'm not the one recording, it does sometimes well, it have like a uh, no-entry symbol type thing, showing that you will most likely not hit your opponent because there's something obstructing your view. Basically, what it will do is there will be... A, your crosshair will still be red from aiming at the enemy. However, there will be a red circle on it as well, and I think uh, an X cross as well. Going across it, basically saying you can't shoot that. Now, that's not always going to be 100% accurate. You will still so sometimes hit people when that's up, but a majority of the time, you will not. Oh, another thing that came to mind. Uh, we had prepared a sm sh little bit of a list, but things come to mind as they come to mind. The radar, down in the corner. No matter what, people, when they fire, or are driving a car, they will show up on the radar there will be little red triangles, and if you look closely, there's an 80 meter uh, limit on the radar. So anyone within 80 meters, which sight range is a maximum of 100, you cannot extend it past that. It is 100 meters that you can see enemies, period. Now, there are some exceptions that allow you to hit enemies beyond that distance, but we're not going into that here. The radar is your friend. Learn to pay attention to it. If you hear gunfire, but you can't essentially tell where it's coming from, you don't know whether it's from your mission, look at your radar. If it is an enemy firing, they will be a red triangle. You can use it to orient yourself. The radar, the top of the radar, will always be in the direction you are facing. And it does have compass directions on there. However, I find they're very hard to actually call out using, unless you have yeah. well advance on the enemy. So... Another something, I'd like to note, something like I'd, li I'd like to note on the radar first is that your teammates who are firing on the radar, as our example now, if you watch my green blip on the radar, while I'm firing, it will light up. It's, the reason this is bigger is to show that your teammate is on radar and that they are totally visible to the enemy. Although it was being really weird there, maybe it's because I was looking at you. Try firing now. Hmm. You know what, hold the button down for a minute. Now, you might see it there, there was a lot of successive flashes. So, that'll also let you know. But remember, anytime you fire a gun, or anytime an enemy fires a gun, you guys will show up on the radar. The enemy will f show up when he's on the radar, and so and so. Now, I'm in a car uh, Another here. thing to note... Oh, well, uh, I think you're about here. to cover that. <laughs> here. I'll, I'll, I'll let him do the driving. Now, you see, his dot looks normal right now. He's perfectly stationary. The moment he starts driving, you notice his circle gets bigger on the radar. In the case of an enemy, it will cause a red triangle to show up. The same red triangle that would show if they were shooting. So, another thing to mention, if you are approaching a point and you drive straight out a doorway using a car, the enemies will know you are there if they're looking at their radar. Because your red triangle will show up from 80 meters out to them. 80 meters from that person's given position. Now, another thing that that's helpful for is if somebody notices it, and another person does not, the game has an inbuilt voice chat system. This button, to it is defaulted to push to talk, and the default push to talk key is the letter Z. Now, you're going to hear a slight echo here, because Greg is going to push it and speak through it to show you that it exists. Press Z to talk. Now, you may have seen that the speaker icon next to him on the party list lit up when he did that. And that's to help you know who's speaking. Now, that may not necessarily be easily able to be looked at, however, if I'm looking at him and he speaks... Like this? You'll see it also shows up on their name tag by their character. So you can see who's speaking if they're in front of you, well, within your view. Now, keep in mind, the game also defaults to have district chat on. So when you speak, enemies that also have their district chat enabled can hear you. Now, this is district voice chat. It's separate from the standard district chat. You can change this in the audio settings here. Now, I have mine set to manual with district voices off. This both prevents them from hearing me and from me hearing them. I do, however, have team and voice checked, but not clan. Partly because I don't join clans, and partly because I don't think your clan wants to hear your conversations that are going on in your missions. Audio ducking is a feature that quiets out game sounds to make it easier for you to hear people when they're talking. And those sliders 
uh, change the volume of those given chat channels as well. Keep in mind your microphone volume is based on your Windows microphone volume settings, so if people people may not be able to hear you if you don't have your microphone set up right, and things like Skype will screw with that. It's a very important thing to note as well that if you are talking tactics with your team, make sure there are either no enemies around you or district chat is off, otherwise, as Nico said, they will hear you. I really don't think you needed to use the in-game voice chat to notify them of that. I totally forgot I was using the in-game voice chat. <laughs> <laughs> as I said, I've been playing uh, with people We're who are professionals! <laughs> Maybe not. Uh. Now, hmm. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, right! Interceptions with cars. If you're, say your enemy decides to take the package and run. Now, I'm not gonna lie, knowing the map is a very important part of this game. Now, obviously, you can't, in a lot of cases, unless they're in a notably slow car, because each car has different top speeds, but also different strengths and weaknesses to go along with it, except for most cars. A lot of cars in this game just suck. Um, there is also many driving techniques you can use to stop people. One of them is called a pit maneuver. What you do is if you can manage to get up near them, and say you get the front end of your car, this is going to be a hard one to pull off, you know that? You can do it here as you drive, drive past Violet. Now, if you say you're driving down the road and you're catching up with them, but you want to stop them, not just getting up next to them, what you can do is you can get your car up near the rear end, and basically, th this is very hard to do when we're trying to actually coordinatingly do it, by the way. Oddly enough, a lot easier in actual practice. You'll get up, take your front end, and slam it into the rear end like this. Now, in the case of... Uh, there's a lot of lighter cars, for example, like the Enforcer Jeep and the Crim Micro. They're not very good at paying vehicles out. They don't have much weight. Vehicles like the Vegas, uh, which is this, the muscle car. The Jericho has a decent amount. That is that car right there. I'm not sure what it's designed after. I think it's like a newer Dodge Challenger or something. Oh, uh, the uh, Jericho. Yeah. I think it's a Ford Mustang. I don't know. Now, this car right here, this is a Dalton Broadwing. There's two different kinds of taxis in the game, but this is the better of the two. This car has very good acceleration, it's got really good weight, and it was specifically designed for vehicle takeouts. Well, redesigned for vehicle takeouts. It didn't used to be quite so good. It's actually one of the best ramming cars in the game. Yeah, it's got a lot of weight, so it can not only be used for pitting people out, if I can do it right, it can also... Uh, this is going to be hard to time. I want to basically T-bone you in the uh, crossroad here. So I need you to come down from near... Oh, we're at double B. Come from down one of the roads. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is going to be hard to pull off. And go. Now, it's got really good ramming power, which means that if you T-bone him, there's a very good chance... In some cases, with different cars, it will actually send them rolling down the road. In the case of his, his car, it just flat out pushed it sideways and forced him into the wall from his straight trajectory he was on. And if you're looking for really good vehicles for intercepting with, the Broadwing is one. The Jericho can do it okay. Uh, the Vegas is good if you can drive it. It's very hard to drive, so I'd be very careful with that. I'll just take this one here. You don't need... Also, in most cases, you can shoot near a civilian to make their car stop if you're trying to take the car. You don't have to shoot it directly. Now, this car has some serious ramming power at high speed, but not especially great at low speed. Also, that car might be a very heavy car, but it is actually one of the easiest cars to pit out. Yeah, it's really easy to pit out. I think partly because it's rear-wheel drive. But it is very hard to drive although it has a lot of weight. Like, even the Broadwing here, notice how I may have hit it a little bit off-center, but I did just kind of plow straight through the front end of that car. Very few cars have the ramming power that this car does. This is a Dalton Fresno. It is basically an extremely heavy car. And Greg just killed me. I'll bring the Fresco over. That is another important thing to note. You do not need to be driving at high speeds to kill your teammates, or anyone. 
Cars can do a very good job of killing people even at low speeds. So don't think, oh, he's going slow, he's not going to kill me. Because they can. And they will. Um, a good way to stop getting run over at a high level, you unlock something called Valzapram tablets. Which, a car has to be going extremely fast to kill you. In fact, the cars have to be going so fast that the actual car you originally start off with in the game cannot run you over. Yeah. I don't know, I find them unreliable at times, though. It is really funny when somebody starts screaming at you, Why didn't you get ran over? But this is... It's, this video is meant for people who times. don't know anything about the game, and they don't need to know about things they won't have until a lot later down the road. Because it does have a rating requirement of 195 to wear. Now, an important thing to note, um, this is something I don't think they tell you. It's been a long time since I've done this tutorial. Do you, if you go up to a car spawner, like so, or you go to a joker box, or even a contact, you can actually bring up your inventory for using by. the I key, and you can actually change your weapons at any of them. Like, for example, I can go to the mailbox right here, and I can bring up my inventory, and I can change my weapon here, and it will fill up my ammo. Or I can change which one of my cars I'm using here, which I've got too many. And, yeah. And you can change them there. You, if you change your car, it will forcefully despawn it from the game, even if your teammates are driving it. Which can be a good thing and a bad thing. Because if your teammates are just trying to take your car and be douchebags with it, and not actually using it because they have to to get to the mission objective, forcefully despawning the car is a fun thing to do. Because they all of a sudden go, what the fuck? Because their car disappeared. However, um, is there anything else that you have on mind that you want to talk about, Greg? Uh, not really, except for the only thing that can probably be a Fresno is a dump truck. Which you cannot outram, so don't even try if you see one. Um, dump trucks come in different flavors. There's the big long ones with the black tarps on the back. There's the cement truck, and then there's the green dump truck. Or That's actually the only trash truck, truck, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, don't try to outram them. It won't work. In fact, uh, if they are somebody who's in your mission, there is a very high probability that hitting them will blow you up, not them. But yes, it will straight up blow you up, especially if they hit you. Security trucks are also really good for ramming power and durability versus bullets. And then there is the... The uh, Enforcer version is the Pioneer, and the Criminal version is the Seiyu Espacio. They are designed to be higher ramming power... Ooh, sorry about that. Higher ramming power vehicles, and they're also extremely durable. Um, but those you won't have access to for a little while in the game unless you go straight for them. Then you could probably get them in a day if you really tried. I believe they actually have the same ramming power as a Fresno, just they are more durable and with a bit more speed. I think you underestimate the durability of a Fresno. You know that car has uh, the second highest durability in the game. Well, aside from dump trucks and security. Okay, let me rephrase that. It has the second highest player-ownable durability. Yes. That was terrible English, but I'm going to go with that. Now... I'm going to put your theory to the test. Hmm. That's stage 2 fire. So, about the same life as a T-25. T-25s actually can't survive a direct rocket. I don't think. No, maybe they can. Did I test that? That nope. spawn yours now when we shall test it. Oh, fine. When did this become testing stupid things? This is supposed to be a tutorial. It is a tutorial. Uh, it it's kind of spawned telling people car. that if people's got a rocket launcher to get out of cars... Uh, also, it's called an Osma. O-S-M-A-W. Yeah. So, if you hit tab and look at people's guns, which I can't show you here because you have to be on a mission, or have done a mission, then you can still look at the previous mission's information. Yeah, it can't survive a direct rocket. In other words, if you want to drive a car and have at least a decent success of surviving an Osma, and you only have 
th there's only really three choices on the open road you can pick. The Dalton Fresno, the dump truck, or the security truck. Most other vehicles that are found on the road will just die. T25, I mean, rockets, personally, I find them easy to dodge, but eh, we're not going to get into that. That's for people to learn. One last thing, thing oh, oh. I was going to say, one last thing I want to add to this is if you look at somebody and they're using a weapon from Armus, it's a yellow weapon, it's not pay to win. I hate to break it to you, but any gun can be beaten with a little bit of skill and a little bit of intelligence and a little bit of flanking and occasionally it might take some teamwork. Teamwork is very important to the game. If you can get uh, your team to communicate with you, it will help a lot. On a note of that, where people say pay to win and all that, this gun is notoriously for that accusation, shall I say. Oh, the uh, here OCA we go. Whisper. Now, this gun I'm pulling out here, Pig. you unlock this at Point Man 1. It's, uh, it's just like the, the regular OCA you can purchase from unlocking from one of the first contacts, except for it has a stock on it. It's functionally identical. It just has a different model. Now, if you look... If we were to both crouch down, shoot at that wall, uh, next to the gray door. Which, these guns are actually designed for close range combat. Now, you see, it's kind of all over the place, but it, it's still within a decent area. Now, if I fire this stock, you know, weapon straight from a contact, well, essentially straight from the contact, it's identical to the base OCA you get. As you can tell, it's actually... Why was that more accurate? Wait, because are you aiming down your sight? Yes, I was aiming down sights. Uh, okay, let me try aiming down my sight and we'll see what happens. As you can see, if anything, that gun is apparently less accurate. How does that work? I don't know. But basically, it's one of those things where people say, oh, it's pay to win. It actually isn't. It's just... Um, it's an easier variant to use, uh, if anything, that's all. And to actually be honest, if this gets in a fight with the standard stock thing, unless the person using the stock thing is actually quite bad, this will lose. The only reason I even have one is because, well, I like the noise. It's the same reason I have a silenced FBW. I like the noise. But uh, another thing I want to mention, there is one gun. Now, this one isn't actually the one from Armus. Uh, this is from the retail box. This is the Scout. It's like the standard NHVR 7.62, except for this one is lighter, however it deals less damage. And, as you can tell, I can sprint at full speed with it. Now, it has one additional advantage. I don't know, we're not entirely sure if this is intentional or what, but it's called a jump shot. What it is, is if you're running and jump up in the air, aim down the sight, and fire, if you time it right, you can land your shots on your target in mid-air. They are a bit dickish to do, and it is the only real advantage that this gun has over the other ones. Well, the sprinting is nice, but you don't need it. Um, it is a complete pain in the ass. However, if you just drop out, give yourself a little bit of time to heal, I believe the base heal time without clotting agent is 4 seconds to start healing and 11 seconds to full health, I think. Uh, but you only need a little bit of health to make this gun 3-shot. Another important thing to note, if you're fighting someone with an Osmo and dying repeatedly, purchase a Kevlar 1. It's unlocked very early, but uh, the Osmo does exactly enough damage at its epicenter to kill a player, so if you pick up Kevlar 1, it won't kill you, even if you take one directly to the face. To go into technicalities of that, just because I can. I think a we're getting a little a bit. HP I think we went from advanced tutorial to too technical now, though. So I think yeah. we should probably consider stopping. Ah! Oh, and one extra note: it doesn't hurt to have a large amount of weapons bought at a given time that fulfill different roles. It's good to have a sniper, a medium-range weapon, a close-range weapon, and if you can, a car destroyer, which. For ex the uh, one of the better car destroyers in the game that you can get early, the A Lake. This gun for is good for killing cars. For, yeah, for example, you saw all of his weapons there. Where I have assault rifles, sniper rifles, close range weapons, 
everything on constant buy. It's not a permanent thing that you have. You just buy them as they are on ten day leases. As you know, as he's just said, his car destroyer is a um, an LMG. My car destroyer, personally, is a rocket launcher, just to stop people from running away. You know what I would use for my car destroyer, given the opportunity. <laughs> I wonder if I still have one in my mailbox. No. In case you're wondering what all these weapons are from, it's just random shit from the uh, Joker boxes. Which, uh, by the way, you can earn G1 credits free from offers on their website. Not always 100% reliable, but I believe if you do an offer that's worth a bit, and for some odd reason don't get credited, you can actually send in a report with like a screenshot of you completing it. So, screenshot every single one of your completed offers in case you don't get credited, because if you complete the offer and send it in, there's a really good chance you will get credited, or at least you'll stop that offer from showing up for people in the future. Another thing about, um, as you said, with weapons in your mailbox then, if you actually go to the Armors Marketplace, which on Steam, I'm guessing Nico's going to do it as I say it, where if you just press Escape and click Armors Marketplace, It'll bring up the hours marketplace for you. If you click on any weapon on there, um, he can't probably do it because he's probably using them all. You'll actually have a try for free button where you can, you know, try a weapon for free for 30 minutes if you're not premium and three hours if you are premium. So it's a nice way to have a little feel for a weapon if you like, you know, want to try out a weapon to see what it's like. Why can I try for free the whisper? I thought I have already used that try for free option. I don't know, you keep getting them given to you every five minutes anyway. No, I, I, I haven't bought that many Joker boxes. Well, you could show them what I mean by the try for free function now with that. Also to note, it, note, if you have premium, it actually extends the trial. Uh, if you don't have premium, the, the weapons are on a 30 minute trial. You could have it for 30 minutes. I will note, from the time you remove it from your mailbox, not from the time you click the button to try for free. It is based on when you take it out of your mailbox. So, anyhow, you can click try for free. Uh, let's see what I have for options for try for free. I want to try and pick up one that, you know, isn't important to me. If you have premium, you get it for three hours. Here we go. I can I can buy Entech 5 Devos. I have I got my point man up there. Now, you click try for free. You go to your mailbox. And it'll just be right here, the paper clip. Retrieve. Now, this is... You're going to have to switch to it manually via your inventory. Now, as you can see right here, it says expires in 2 hours and 59 minutes for me. And you can try... I believe you can try every weapon in Armus via this feature. I don't think there's a single one that you can't try for free. Yeah, I believe they updated it so you can try every single one of them. However, you need to be careful when you look at them because if they, if they say open slot versions, there is no reason for you to get it if you don't have any mods, weapon mods, to put in it because it's essentially the same as the stock version. That is all the additional versions do is add uh, modification slots, which all the weapons have uh, modifications. They have upsides and downsides. <coughs> Except for, I swear to God, Reflex Sight doesn't have a downside. I swear. Uh, um, another thing I'd like to add, and this is going back to the cover thing, where if Nico looks on the floor for me, or Zynda, shall I say, floor? you can see my shadow. Oh. Yes. Now, this is important to note, because let's if, say I am... If oh, your video wait, card can... If your computer can handle it, because don't turn them on if your computer can't handle hardly running the game, which, in my opinion, you might not want to be playing it if you can barely play it anyhow. But dynamic shadows, you want them. For example, I'll go out here and pray it's day. Oh, it's kind of day. Uh, well, your shadow's kind of facing the wrong direction. Uh, let's see here. No. No. <laughs> I right. can't really do it because of the way some of the lights are. I'll do it this stuck. Uh, okay, sure. Now, there's different lighting sources in the world, and if somebody's hiding behind a wall, and you notice that the shadows are moving in a way where it's shadowing the wall they're standing behind, you can actually look for their shadow, which, keep in mind, switch view, which it does make a noise, people can hear that. They can hear your hand switching noise, as well as your reloads, your firing, climbing of ladders, hitting of trash cans, boxes, opening and closing of car doors, opening of doors. And the most notorious noise of all, 
You ready? Gunfire? Reloading. Oh. Did I not mention that? I don't know. I don't know either. Did, did we mention that you can hear reloading? Just thought we'd mention that. Now, unless the person you're fighting... and in, let's, uh, I'm just going to put it this way. In, in terms of equal accuracy of the two people, is your sidearm will generally lose to a primary in a straight-up fight if you are both equally skilled. Now, however... In most cases, as it is with other games, say you run your main, your primary weapon out of ammo, you'll notice how reloading takes a fairly decent amount of time. However, firing, and say you run out of ammo, switching to your secondary, if you switch to your secondary, you can pull it out and fire faster than you could reload. So consider it additional bullets, but weaker. However, it's also really good if you... You can also choose secondary weapons that... Fill in the gaps of your primaries. So, for example, if you're using a sniper rifle, you can pick up one of the fully automatic secondaries, or the Obeya FBW, which is good at a lot of ranges, and has actually been been considered to replace the snub nose as the default starter sidearm because it is just that good. It is actually a jack of all trades sidearm, essentially. Although it it does kind of blow at distances, but I, I cannot tell you the number of times I've slaughtered people with this gun. Just just because I felt like using this gun. Oh, pick snipers off with this gun before and all that. It's my favorite is sni p picking off Obeya rifles with it. Because the Obeya rifle has a time to kill if they land all five shots of I think point seven two, and this gun has a time to kill of point eight. So yeah, the time to kills, they're extremely low, which is why it comes down to skill and aim. And luck, because spread is factored by the server, not by how you aim and how you shoot. Which is also why no spread hacks don't exist. If you see some, if it looks like somebody only fired five bullets to kill you when they were full autoing with a shaw, it's because the more bullets that are happening at a time, some of them will actually start to not render, down to the point where only the ones that hit you will be the ones that render. Oh, and another thing I should mention, if you click too fast with semi-auto weapons, uh, I can never usually get it to happen with Obeya, but with the Joker, it's pretty notorious, especially if you're trying to use macros or mouse wheel firing, which we won't get into that because that's kind of stupid too. Uh, you can actually get what's called a ghost bullet for firing too fast. It can happen with any gun, even the HVR with its really slow fire rate. And it sucks when it happens with that gun, so be very careful. That's loud! And sounds like somebody's beating a piece of sheet metal. However, since this is starting to get a little bit too technical, I think this is good enough for now. I think it outlines a lot of the basics. It came a little bit run on at the end, and I apologize for that. But uh, hopefully this helps you and other people perform better in APB from the start. Let's make newbie not necessarily mean bad. And who knows, maybe we'll come up with a weapon technicalities video or something. But uh, if, if you want to see some actual gameplay, please refer to my channel, as I have an entire playlist of APB videos of using gameplay, pri playing primarily with just Greg here, and the occasional random people we get groomed grouped with, and some additional friends of ours at random times. So, if you want to see some gameplay and some of these things at work, feel free to head over to my other videos and check them out. But, hopefully, you learn something from this video, and you take something away that helps you make you a better player. This, these things, are valid to both factions. None of them are faction specific. Aside from maybe information about the Jericho. However, the Bashada is very similar. Uh, that's how they're I designed. want my Bashada! Shut up! <laughs> this is not the video for that. <laughs> they, they, they handle different. He likes how the Bashada handles, which is the Krim car. I personally like the Jericho. But anyhow, if, this has gone on long enough. <laughs> and uh, hopefully. Hopefully. Just hopefully. Yep. So, uh, yep. We'll see you guys next time. See you in the district, hopefully. Oh! And on that note, should you require further information, 
you can find me uh, on Lazy Neko, as it says on my bulletproof vest, on the server Joker East, US East. So, uh, play quite a bit, and uh, yeah, hopefully I get to see you guys on the field of battle, and hopefully my tips helped you kick my ass. See you guys next time.